Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. I recently made a video about how to cast skateboard or longboard bushings at home, and at the end of that video I mentioned that the right way to cast urethane is under pressure, and that I had a pressure pot waiting to try experimenting with that. Getting that pressure pot ready was supposed to be a small project, and the job of converting a Harbor Freight pressure pot into one that you can use for casting is one that has been covered many times over here on YouTube. For mine, I followed along with the videos that both Zach Higgins and Rybinator did on the subject, and I'll link to those videos down below. But I didn't want to make that same video and add to the collection of videos of how to convert a pressure pot that are here on YouTube. I wanted to make skateboard parts, you know? That's what this channel is about, making and riding boards. So I started going through the process of converting my pressure pot, and I didn't record it, because I wasn't planning on making that same video. But Harbor Freight isn't known for their consistency. I've heard and read so many stories of faulty tools and wasted money, but I haven't lost a game of Harbor Freight Roulette. Until now. I just could not get this pressure pot to work. There was a broken weld, the gasket wouldn't seal, the clamps weren't strong enough, and the fittings for the air connections leaked. So here I am. I need a pressure pot, and I'm not making that same how to convert a paint pot for casting video. No, this video is more of a how to beat a Harbor Freight pressure pot into submission and make it do what you want so we can cast some dang old urethane type of video. So let's go. To get started, I had to disassemble everything and get back to the bones. And just look at that Teflon tape. Pathetic. We'll get to that later. The first issue I wanted to address was the leaking gasket. I pulled the stock gasket out of the lid of the pot and flipped it over. We're going to be making our own gasket that actually works, because we're good at things, and Harbor Freight is not. To do this, I braced and shimmed the pot lid so it was level. Then, to make sure it didn't shift around, I put a big honking chunk of tool steel on it to weigh it down. Next, I grabbed this. This is a 3D printed part I designed that we're going to use to form the gasket. This part rides along the outer rim of the gasket cavity, and this part will impress the shape of the rim of the pot into the gasket material. The gasket we're replacing was flat. Flat! A flat surface to seal a curved one. No, we're better than that. Our surfaces are going to make cleanly curve to curve. I filled the rim of the pot lid with 100% silicone, then drove my printed part around the edge. It turns out I used way too much silicone, but that's alright, better too much than too little. I went around the lid until the surface of the silicone was free of bumps. And look at that, nice curved ceiling surface for our pot. I talked about durometer in the bushing casting video, and this silicone is 15A, which is really, really soft. Something a little harder might last longer, and I may have to replace it in the future. But that's cool. I wanted a softer gasket, as the rim of the pot is kind of wavy and not super flat. The intention here is that in addition to the added surface area from the curved gasket, the silicone will deform and take the shape of the rim when the lid gets clamped down, and that will give me a better seal. Once the silicone had cured, I cleaned up the excess and the overflow with a knife. There. Gasket. Done. What's next? Plumbing. Gotta fix those leaks. To do that, I had to go back and tediously pick out all the Teflon tape I had used to seal the joints. Because we're not going to be using tape to seal our plumbing. Instead, we're going to be using this stuff. Loctite 545. This is an anaerobic thread sealant. It's a liquid that gets down into your threads, and when it isn't exposed to air, it cures hard, sealing everything off. So let's add that to all the joints and reassemble everything. Great, we're looking pretty good. I did have to orient everything in a way that kept my pipework out of the way of the pot clamps, and that comes back to haunt me a little later. Speaking of clamps, look at these things. Little baby clamps. No, we need more leverage so that we can clamp the lid down tighter, and bigger paddles, for lack of a better word, so that we can really lean into these handles. So I designed and printed these. These are adapters that slip right over the Harbor Freight clamp handles, making them bigger and much easier to use. And if anyone else wants to upgrade their pot in this way, I'll have the links to the files for the handles and for the gasket forming tool down below. So great, we have a better gasket, our plumbing should be sealed, and we can clamp the lid of the pot down way tighter than we would have been able to before. One of the downsides of the thread sealant is that it takes a long time to cure. If it's brass on brass, it takes up to 24 hours to reach 100% strength, and if it's iron on iron, it's 72. We've got a little bit of both here with the brass fittings and the iron lid, so it's going to be three days. In the meantime, I went about making myself a sort of tray to account for the curved bottom of the pot. This isn't anything special, I just cut a disc of plywood that fits within the diameter of the pot. Ah, 
I drilled a hole in the center for a handle so that I could easily remove it. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of this, but I used the handle from the lid of the pressure pot as a handle for my tray. Sweet deal, that works perfectly. Three days later, I came back to check how my thread sealant had cured and... Yeah, it didn't. Actually, most of the joints worked perfectly, only one failed, but it only takes one to make the system leak. A nice thing about the sealant is that you don't have to crank the joints down all the way in order to get it to seal, which means you get a little wiggle room when you're getting everything aligned. But I guess in the joint where all of these fittings socket into the cap lid, I didn't tighten it enough and the sealant never cured. At this point, I took a step back so that I could reevaluate. I was doing what felt like a ton of work and dealing with a lot of frustration to make a tool that might not even work for my needs. I've heard in a lot of places, including some of the comments that you guys have left me, that urethane requires vacuum degassing in order to be cast without bubbles. So this pressure pot thing might not even work. So I decided that before going through with another build, I had to verify my hypothesis here. Will pressure casting urethane rubber get us a bubble-free cure or not? So instead of trying to get everything perfect, I quickly reassembled all of my pipework for the third time. And I'm back to using Teflon tape. I am just trying to do a quick test here. I mixed up a batch of resin and poured it into two cups. One will sit outside and cure normally, and the other will go into the pot and cure under pressure. I clamped the pot shut, hooked up the air, pressurized it, and it leaked. But I was expecting that. To get around the leaks, I'm leaving my air line connected and letting my compressor regulate the pressure on the whole system. This way, as air leaks out, more pressure can be added to compensate. Doing this, I should be able to keep the pot pressurized while the urethane cures. The urethane I'm using has a two hour demold time. I left it in for three just to be safe, and I babysat the pot the whole time, checking in every 10 minutes or so to adjust air regulators and try to keep my pressure consistent. Now, for the moment of truth. This is the control sample that was left out in the open air, and this is the kind of bubbling that I'm hoping we can eliminate. And this is the sample cured under pressure. What a relief. All that work wasn't for nothing. This is a nearly bubble-free puck of urethane rubber. There's a couple minuscule bubbles, but they're only at the very top surface, and aside from that, it's clear all the way through. Now, I have bushings and wheels that I've purchased that have bigger bubbles than this. That means that not only are these results good, they're professional level. And I haven't even gotten the system working yet. How exciting is that? With better control over the pressure pot without having to worry about the pressure fluctuating with leaks and refills, we might actually be able to get flawless castings. So, what's next? Well, the process works, so it's worth the time for me to finish my pressure pot and take the time to get it working right. I've got an air regulator upgrade on order because after that last test, I suspect that the air regulator that came with the pot is also leaking. But once that arrives, I'll get it installed and I'll get all the fittings sealed up with Loctite. And with sealed fittings, an improved gasket, and a stronger clamping pressure on the top, we should be ready to rock. Homemade bushings and wheels, here we come. I'm gonna do a couple more sets of bushings to get a little bit more practice working with the material and kind of nail down my process. But then yes, I'm gonna tackle making some wheels. And that should be hella fun, so I'm really excited about it, and I hope you are too. So, if you're not subscribed, why don't you go ahead and get aboard this train? We're headed to some really cool places. And if you've got questions, leave them down below. I do my best to respond. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Bullseye.